I recently attended a defensive carbine class with Independence Training in Casa Grande, Arizona. It was a fantastic experience and I learned a few things. It also presented me with the opportunity to work on fundamentals under the close supervision of experts and it caused me to question some things that I had previously taken as fact. In short, the class did everything that good training ought to do. After the class, I caught up with Glenn Stilson, the owner of Independence Training, to pick his brain about what he considers to be the top five accessories that you should buy for your home defense rifle. If you're willing, I would like you to tell them why an AR-15 is the very best home defense weapon that you can get. Well, to, to start just before that very briefly, one of the best things that you can do is understand how structural defense works, right? So if you look at the four Ds of structural defense, which are, uh, you know, deter, right? Don't do things that make someone not want to mess with you, right? Detect, if they're going to mess with you, let's see them or detect them early. Delay, if they decide to continue this assault, let's delay them as long as possible, buying us as much time as possible to continue to prepare. And then lastly, defend. So if we're going to talk about home defense, we're assuming that all those other things have failed, as opposed to, you know, leaving the gate open and the drawbridge down and then sitting back with our AR and being like, oh, don't worry, I have an AR to freaking, you know, shoot bad guys with. If you lock down the castle, right, deter, detect, delay, and defend, the likelihood of you have to deploy this is relatively small. The other benefit of that is if someone has breached all those levels of defense and now they stand in front of you or are coming towards you with something like an AR-15 in your hands, you absolutely know what the <laughs> game is. Not just do you know, but everybody who's going to Monday morning quarterback it afterwards yep. cannot deny I've done what it. their intentions are. Everything were. possible to avoid this confrontation and it came to me. Looking at that from that perspective as well, from that legal perspective, is a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about in, over the next couple of minutes here has got to be understood by whoever's listening that not all this stuff might be legal where you live, all right? So I'm sorry if that's the case. Um, that really sucks. Get involved in your local grassroots organization and do what you can to fight back. That's the best, best advice I can give you. If it's not legal, don't do illegal things, right? Because if you use an illegal firearm, whether that means it has a suppressor attached to it, it's, it's an SBR, um, you know, has a 30 round capacity magazine, if that's illegal in your state or whatever, if you're gonna use that and, and then you're gonna play the card of, well, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six, first of all, understand the history of that quote by Colonel Cooper was not go do illegal shit and then hope <laughs> that right. in the end, 12 people who don't think, act, or live like you are gonna be like, yeah, you totally should have done that, which is always an important thing. You probably remember this from the carbine class where one of the first questions we ask in our defensive level classes is, who can explain self-defense to me in this state? Go. There's 20 students or so standing around. One or two of them are kind of hemming and hawing about it. And it's like, hold on a second. Everyone here is here to learn how to use this firearm for self-defense. And you're telling me you don't even know what the laws are? These are the rules of the game, man. And anyone who said there's no rules in a fight is full of shit. Because I've never been in a fight, civilian, military, or otherwise, where there weren't some type of rules. I don't know, things like rules of engagement, the law. Why is a, an AR-15 appropriate or really good for home defense? There's a couple of reasons. My personal reason is it can be uh, modified and accessorized, again, with, within law, right? Um, just about any possible way you could want it. So it's easy for me to build a seven and a half inch suppressed AR pistol these days, right, with a brace on it that is lightweight, minimal recoil. I can shoot it inside the home without worrying about being deaf or blind afterwards. It's easily manageable. Put a 20 or 30 round magazine in there if you want, and you have a really easy to run gun. Now if I gotta hand that to a kid or someone smaller than me and say, hey, here's the tool I need you to defend this doorway with, or here's a tool I need you to help me out with, or God forbid something happens to me and my kid tries to make the escape and finds me crumpled in a heap at the bottom of the stairs and has to pick up my gun and continue to defend, I mean, look, man, stranger things have happened. So if my smallest of kids can pick up this gun and utilize it, I'd rather that. And a pistol, even though it's smaller, lighter weight, is not as easy or really as intuitive to aim and fire as a carbine is, especially with a very, very minimal amount of training, right? I like the increased lethality of rifle rounds. Right? Absolutely. Um, if I'm gonna shoot somebody, it's not because I wanna, I want them to have an extended stay in the hospital, right? Uh, I, I mean to end it here. Right? I don't want them to go on later and hurt someone else because they got away from me. A lot of times people will say, like, my pistol is to fight my way to my rifle. I'm like, bro, <laughs> if you're fighting your way to a rifle, you're in a whole other kind of freaking situation. So probably in a home defense situation, the gun you start the fight with is going to be the gun you end the fight with, right? Yeah. So the rifle gives me the capability to end the fight 
faster, more efficiently. And even though from a training perspective, we are very big on marksmanship and hit accountability, you're going to struggle with that when everyone's moving and no one wants to get shot and it's dark and you're scared and you're underwear and you're not on a square range somewhere shooting at a paper target. So the likelihood of you missing or maybe not getting very good hits is definitely there. So the hits I do get, I need them to be as effective as possible. Now, the other big advantage of, of being able to use a rifle in a home defense situation, I kind of mentioned modification earlier, but the ability to add all the things I need to one platform. So I don't need to pick up my pistol with a light, with an extra mag, I don't need any of that. I just pick up my rifle, it's got the light attached to it, it's got maybe an optic on it. Putting an optic on a pistol may not be ideal for a home defense situation, but <clears throat> it's perfect for a rifle type situation. You know, I can have all the ammo I'm gonna need. And why is that? Why, why is an optic, why does an optic on a rifle make a lot more sense than on a pistol? It's much more intuitive for close quarters engagements. Uh, so now, and I know the red dot pistol people would argue with me on this, but I shoot a red dot pistol significantly. I shoot it for competition quite a bit. I've used it for defensive training purposes, but an optic on a rifle just makes more sense because it's more intuitive as you bring the rifle into position, you're going to see that red dot a whole lot faster. It mechanically puts your eye behind it. For a close quarters engagement inside of a structure, using a red dot on a pistol I don't think is advantageous, unless you're running all, all blacked out with night vision on, in which case it's a huge advantage. My biggest reason for the AR is its simplicity and its ability modified. I wanna pick your brain a little bit sure. about, and the title of this video is the top five accessories okay. for yep. a home defense rifle. Glenn and I both put together our respective lists of what we consider to be the top five accessories for a home defense rifle. And I'd like to step through them yep, uh, because we agreed on it. Uh, we didn't commiserate beforehand. No, we did not. <laughs> um, although I did know a little bit, I had I cheated a little bit, and then I I attended your class. So I know a little bit about what right. you, what's in what you had in mind. Most of this stuff lines up. Um, we're going to start at number five. <laughs> okay, number five. Um, I put an optic at number five. I did not say iron sights because, in my opinion. Um, some sighting system is part of a rifle. It's not a rifle <laughs> unless it has a, sight a sighting on system. It. So the next accessory that you would add to it would be an optic. Um, and my reasoning for that is it makes you faster, especially in lower light. And that's it. Like at stupid close range inside of this room, which is, you know. The majority of home defense yeah. engagements are probably going to happen yeah, out here. About, about this, maybe twice as far away as the longest distance in this room. That's, that's about it. You don't need sights so much. Not really. I mean, if you've you, done a lot you of You need sights, fire, but. Exactly. <laughs> you, that if you've done a lot of reflexive fire, the rifle comes up. If that front sight base is somewhere on here, mm -hmm. you can press that trigger. Red and, dot is somewhere in here. If yeah, that whatever optic if thing the guy's is somewhere inside in here. The hole. <laughs> right. <laughs> the great thing about the EOTech, if the dude's in the hole, press the trigger. Yeah. Right. That, so when I say that the optic makes you a little faster, I mean in a very minimal way. And if you have to take a shot at a very small target. You have a low percentage hit. Yeah, you're a little quicker, a little more precise with the optic, but I don't want people watching this to think that the optic is the, is very important for a rifle. That like, that's why it's number five on my list. Do you concur or do you think that an optic should be a little higher? Uh, optic up? is only number four on my list. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's kind not, close. yeah, we're, we're pretty close there. I mean, so number five on my list is ammo. Um, <clears throat> I don't, I think too many people spend too much time debating ammunition selection. It's got to be on my list. Cause you said, Hey, top five things you definitely have to have for a home defense gun. Ammo has got to be on there, but ammo selection is more like, look, man, pick a bullet that kills people. The end. I agree to an extent. Now, um, I'm kind of known for being an ammo nerd. That's a big part of what sure, I do, is I do the gel testing. Yeah. Between good ammo, and there's a shit ton Tons of, of it. really good ammo for 5.56. Five, Tons of it, yeah. One of the reasons that it's a great choice for home defense Absolutely. is there's so many good choices. But between the choices and good ammo, there's not a lot of difference. They all, they all perform really well. They all, there's a, there are dozens of, of loads that have a very short neck, lots of temporary stretch cavity, lots of expansion and or fragmentation. Good barrier penetration, penetration, good weight retention. But some of the not so great ammo is really not so great. That is like, true. There's, there's some 62 grain, 223 pressure 
um, full metal jacket out there, it doesn't frag or expand or anything. The only wounding mechanism it has is yaw, which makes it just barely slightly better than pistol ammo at, right. at that rate. So I'm putting, I put ammo at second place on my list because I'm talking one, buying enough ammo to, to train and be effective, and two, purchasing ammunition that's proven well in your rifle and performs better than everything else. Because people complain about, well, 50 grain TSX is really expensive. Well, sure, but I mean, a box of 50 rounds isn't that much. Yeah, function check your rifle, zero that bad boy, fill up a magazine, and you got everything you need. Yeah, you got 20 rounds to, to zero and function check, and you've got 30 rounds left over to fill the magazine, you're okay. good to go. And when I say, you know, pick ammo that kills people, what I'm talking about is the way I select ammo is stuff that's seen real world use. I don't care what it does in gelatin. Uh, it, that's neat. That's good data, right? Yes. Um, I don't really care what it does on sides of beef or watermelons or any other ways that people have chosen to market their ammunition. Yeah, whatever, right? For me, I want to know what are rounds that are being applied out there in the real world today. So, like, for me personally, I use 62 grain bear claws. Yes. Why? Because 62 grain bear claws have dumped shit bags like it is going out of style. Yeah. All right? And so I have so much data behind how well 62 grain bear claws have done that there's no need for me to be like, well, I wonder if it's a good, it's a good round. If I remember right, I think that was the top of my list of um, top five defense rounds. It's a phenomenal round. Yep. And so that's what I mean when I say pick, gun, pick a, a, a bullet that's going to whack people because I'm talking about rounds that have real world data behind them. Pick one and, that has real world course, data, go with it. There are several other similar rounds. To, sure. There's a 62 grain um, fusion, 64 grain gold dot are mm -hmm. both pretty much the pretty same bullet rounds. as the 62 grain Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, pick something that has good data behind yes. it. And the reason I put it at the end of my list and not the top of my list is to me it's a really simple choice. Yep. It's like pick an ammo that has some good data behind it and then just go with that. Yeah. So it's important. It's definitely on the top five list, but it's at the bottom because I think it takes the least amount of resources. It's probably the least expensive of everything I have good on my point. list. And, uh, and it's, the, it's the thing that should take the least amount of time to figure out. You don't out. need to get wrapped around the axle no. about it. It's really important. Very important. That's why it's on the list of top five. But I'm not going to spend all day on it. So The next one up on my list is light, which this is where we kind of switched. Um, I had light at We basically four, switched ammo and light. light at yeah. number two. Um, and come to think of it, I think if I revise this list, I would... Put um, I would put my light. Actually, I think I might go up to number two. I don't know why I put it down at number four. I was I was probably smoking crack or something heck, that man? day. You got to see the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, light or, or you know for you, light at, at number four maybe admittedly would have moved it around. For me, the reason I have light at number two is because outside of the knowledge and understanding how to run the gun, which for me training is number one, like. The light is incredibly important. I need to be able to see into spaces. I need to be able to see my guy. Uh, and I need to be able to utilize light even in daytime hours. People are like, lights in daytime hours? What are you talking about? Go take a freaking low light class. It'll blow your freaking mind. Right? Take a good one. Not one where they just run around in the dark and turn lights on. But actually take a low light class that teaches you about low light work. Um, and we, you know, we'll show you how to use lights to great effect, even in you know ambient light conditions, indoor lighting conditions. Lights are very, very effective. You know what? If 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 you will, I'd like you to unpack that a little bit because one of the things that we hear from douchebags on the forums sure. all the time is, well, the reason I have a pistol for home defense is so that I can use my hand-operated light. That way I'm not pointing my point. muzzle at something exactly. I don't want to destroy. And again, those are people who don't understand how lights are being operated. So Thank you. if I move into a space with my gun at a high port, which is normally how I'm going to move into a space, unless I'm specifically looking at coming into a space to cover somebody with a muzzle, i.e. I'm hunting humans, mm -hmm. right? Knowing that everything I care about is behind me, my team is behind me, my tribe is behind me, my family's behind me, whatever it is and everybody's behind me, then yes, the muzzle will be forward because everything unknown to me at that point deserves a muzzle in my home, right? Now, if everything in front of me doesn't deserve a muzzle because I haven't accounted for all my tribe yet, then I'm probably going to be at a ported position, which still gives me a great capability to snap a rifle down and into place, but also illuminating my light, impacting a ceiling without giving away my position, helps me to illuminate an entire space. And then if something needs more immediate light, there's a shadowy area or something like that, I may have to re-divert the light a little bit more towards that space. I'm not walking around with my gun and light up. That's poor tactics. There's too many movies. Too many movies. Th this That's bit, poor tactics. With the, 
with the yeah. with the really with lots of particulates in the air, so you can see the beam. Really yeah, it looks awesome. really cool. It's yeah. so dope. That's another thing too is people start talking about like, well, how many lumens? It's like to unpack it just a little bit. Lumens is a measurement of light at the bulb. It is not the measurement of light that is being thrown. That's candela, and that's an entirely different measurement. So when you're looking at the light, you need to look at what kind of beam it's projecting. Because if you have a thousand lumen beam that's projecting in an actual <laughs> beam, laser. it's going to be a laser beam because it's meant to go out three or 400 yards, and now you're in a building and you can literally see five feet of freaking space. So you need the right kind of beam. You need the right kind of reflector, which means you need the right kind of light. And that's knowledge about lights. I don't give a damn what special ops, alphabet, whatever group is running, any kind of light. What do I need in my space? For me, I want the brightest light possible with the largest flood possible. Because if I'm turning this on, yeah. it's because I can't see. So yeah. I want super bright, really flashing light. People are like, what about it hits the wall and then it blinds you? That is all bullshit. All right, just try it, man. Just try it. Take your brightest light, walk into a walk into the bathroom, shine it in the mirror. If you're dead, I'll pay for your funeral. <laughs> all right? If it just knocks you out, I'll yeah. take care of that. All right? Just have your your widow freaking email me or whatever. It's not going to happen. You'll be like this. Oh, damn. Ah, I don't like that. So then what should you do? Stop doing that. It's not going to totally as soon as that light comes on, it already robs you of whatever night, you know, natural night vision or capabilities you had anyway. With an appropriate light, you don't need to point it at every single thing to see every single thing. So that and a lot of that just breaks down to people not having an appropriate level of training or understanding how lights actually work or how they're actually supposed to be utilizing lights because they think I have to point the light at the thing in order to see it, which isn't true. For 3, our our, our So here's where we really totally, disagree. Totally different. So what's interesting is we actually agree on most of the stuff. Like our, I have optic four, you have optic five. You said, okay, I might switch, you know, light up to two. I have light at two. That's great. Uh, optic is, you know, for us, uh, ammo is both in there. You know, where we kind of tend to agree or disagree is right there at number three. You say sling is important. I say barrel length and or suppressor is important. The two things that made my list and not yours and vice versa is like you said, barrel length is on your list at number three. The thing that made my list and not yours is the sling. Yeah. Let's do the sling first. Okay. I believe a sling is important because um, I have a lot of training inertia with with slings. The, my entire experience with the stoner pattern weapon system has involved a sling. It's the thing that keeps it on my body. It's the thing that reminds me not to leave it behind. <laughs> a sling is to a rifle as a holster is to a pistol. Mm -hmm. That um, when when I'm doing stuff with my hands, I want to be able to drop totally drop the agree. sling. Yeah. If I'm wearing pants, I'm wearing a pistol. Mm -hmm. If I'm fighting with my rifle and it stops working, I don't want to reduce a stoppage. I, I'm, not, I'm not in a team. I'm not going to take a knee and reloading. <laughs> I, I want to move to the gun that, that, that works. A lot of the reasons that I want to sling are, uh, we talked about in, in the class, so I have an idea of where you're going. And, mm -hmm. and I, I see your opinions on that, and I may start coming around. In a moment, I'll have you critique my home defense rifle, and you'll notice that it's not wearing it's a sling a right sling. now. How convenient. Yeah. <laughs> that actually, I took it off the rifle like the day after our class, and I've been playing around with it that way, and I'm, I'm still judging whether or not I want the sling on it. I think for a field rifle, for a shit-hit-the-fan rifle, if, sling. if your home defense 100%. rifle is your shit-hit-the-fan rifle, sure. absolutely. But if I'm going to step out the door of my house, I want a sling. Yeah. As long as I'm in the house, I don't want to sling. Talk to me a little bit about why not. Uh, so there's a couple of reasons. Uh, so first of all, grabbing the gun, if it's bad enough that I'm grabbing my rifle, I also don't want to have to be slinging up. Um, that's, that's, a, 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 that's a time where there's no benefit to okay. me, right? Let's cetera. say I have the sling on there. Uh, okay, yeah. And I have it rubber banded to the stock. Sure. It's nice and tight. It's on there. Cool. I don't have to put it on. Yeah, you don't have to. But if I have a second, I can... You yeah, could. I could put it over. Now, here's why I don't like wearing a sling in, in, a, in a close quarters environment, um, especially where I don't have a team-based environment, right? So if I need to do anything that involves manipulation of the gun, it might be clearing a stoppage. Uh, it might be uh, transitioning to a different position like a high port or maybe going to a low position. Um, it might be, God forbid, moving into a close quarters engagement position. Uh, it might be even moving into an opposite shoulder. It might be handing it off to someone else. Or it might be, in certain circumstances, ditching that tool altogether to go hands-on with somebody um, who requires that type of, of uh, solution right now. I'm probably not also going to have a pistol on me when I'm in a home defense situation with my rifle. If I have enough time in my home 
where I have a pistol on and I'm wearing pants and I have enough time to sling up my rifle, in all reality, I'm probably also going to have a plate carrier on. I'm probably also going to have my freaking bumpy on, all right? I'm probably also going to be like fighting Russians, fucking Wolverines, all right? You know what I mean? Because it's not realistic to me. In my, in my situation, it's not realistic to me that I'm going to have an opportunity to, to have multiple systems where I would transmit If somebody's a working on my door, I'll go grab a rifle. But if they're working on my door, I'm not going to put a PC on. I'm not, I'm not going to... Right? I, I'm going to grab my rifle. You're I'm going to grab your stand rifle. There's the door. Yeah, and I'm going to get on the phone with 911. And if it doesn't stop pretty soon, I'm going to consider putting some rounds to the door. So the idea here and my, my point of the whole no sling thing is it limits me more than it helps me. Because the only reason for me for close quarters engagements, a sling is really just for weapon retention. It's for keeping the, the gun against my body. Um, so that I can go hands-free with someone, so I can transition to a secondary, so I can set a breaching charge or something like that. Pick up right? my kid, I can open pick, the door. I can pick up something. But open even, the door with the kid. Even in a home defense situation, I can break a hand free and grab a kid. I can drag a buddy. I can open a door. I can do things with that one hand where I don't necessarily need full weapon retention. So for me, it just gets in the way. If the gun goes tits up, f*** the gun. I'm doing other stuff, right? Now I gotta do other stuff. I gotta go hands-on, I, I, I gotta do something, right? I muzzle strike them, freaking start old school, butt stroke to the face, you know what I mean? Like I gotta do something that's not going to involve the projectiles anymore. Because again, I'm, I don't have a PC, I probably don't have pants on, I don't have extra mags. If I run out of ammo or have a major stoppage that requires a reload or something like that, it's not happening, man. Yeah. So for me, it's like the gun goes tits up, the gun is useless now. Uh, for the most part, other than a striking device, right, uh, or a door prop or something. So for me, a sling mostly just gets in the way. And, and that's why I don't even have sling on my list. Now, what I do have on my list is barrel length and or suppressor, depending on your barrel length and the legalities of having both of those things in your state. So I like this topic a lot because longer barrels produce more velocity. Of course. Um, which have a small increase in lethality. They're a friend of mine <laughs> likes to tout 20 inch barrels because more damage. Well, kind of, and he's a bullet nerd too. He, he knows, but the, but the difference between a 10 inch barrel and a 20 inch barrel inside the house is fairly minimal. It's, it's incredibly uh, minimal. But then, yeah. but the difference in loudness from a 10 inch barrel and a 20 inch Definitely. barrel is a big difference. Huge difference. Huge. So, Huge difference. I'm like, well, I want a shorter barrel. I want a shorter. I want a shorter because I, it's more maneuverable. Yeah. And, and for me, it was actually kind of the other way around where I had a 16 inch carbine for home defense and then I bought a silencer. And then I'm like, oh, this is, this is a musket. Now, now I have a musket. Know? Yep. It's, it's. It, now we're out to the 20 inch length, but it's also got this weight on the end of it. It's not just barrel. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot Extra of weight, weight out, out, than yeah, barrel, way yeah. out there. And I'm like, oh, this is awkward. So I'm like, okay, well, I bought an 11 and a half inch uh, pistol, put that together, put the mount on. I'm like, all right, this is, this is a lot more reasonable. I registered that lower as an SBR. And that's most of what my home defense rifle is now. I had a little different upper on it and all that, but that's still pretty close to that semi-original configuration that I had for, for home defense. Okay, so let's talk about uh, a gun, which I actually, what we were saying before camera, or before the camera started, I actually like the way you got the gun set up because it's really simple, and I like simple guns when it comes to complex tasks. I like simple tools, right? And complex tasks like home defense, there's a lot of moving parts. More so sometimes than even something like, let's say, a military raid. If the three of us were going to stack up and kick in a door, there's a lot of complexity to that task. Um, and yeah. so there's a lot of complexity usually to the tools that we're going to have to be applying to that task. Different men in that stack are going to have different tools to do different And they're set roles. up differently and we have different gear and all that. But it's like in a complex task like home defense where... I've got lots of moving parts. I'm not sure what most of them are. Um, I'm trying, I'm a little amped up. I'm trying to defend my children potentially or someone that I love or whatever it may be. Um, there's a lot of complexity in that. I want an incredibly simple tool because working within those complex things, I don't have other people to back me up if I start making a mistake. 
So I want a really simple tool, which I like this. Basic stocks, which are fine. Uh, I like just a good simple stock. I don't love the CTR stocks because they are also uh, lovingly referred to as the beard ripper. Of course, and the <laughs> guy with oh, facial yeah, hair, you have yeah. facial I, hair. We've I all lost all the uh, whiskers to yeah. the old CTR stock. Uh, but, uh, but a good simple stock is good. Simple grips, simple triggers. Um, you know, I like all that kind of stuff. I like enhanced charging handles. Uh, I don't like stock char uh, charging handles on any gun for any reason. Any AR, I want an enhanced charging handle. You have backup iron sights, which is nice, but to me, uh, on a home defense gun, the rear sight isn't as important as the front sight, right? Um, I like a fixed front sight base, or at least, like, my primary gun has a flip-up front, but it just stays flipped up. Yeah. Um, just because of the way the gun was built, it didn't have a fixed front sight base, but I actually do prefer a fixed front sight base on yeah. a fighting gun, so my, my front thing just stays up. Plus, they're super tough, right? Yeah. My front sight just stays flipped up. Uh, allows me to co-witness at all times through my optic, so that gives me that secondary sighting system just in case something goes wrong with the red dot. I forgot to turn it on. I left the batteries on for too long. It dies. Whatever. All right. Uh, I can still look through the hole, find the front sight, and get some rounds on target in close range environment. So I like that. Um, it's nice to have the rear. I would say it's probably not going to be used more than it's going to be used, obviously, but it's obviously it's important to have. Good simple red dot, which is exactly what you want. If I can jump in for a second. Yeah. One of the reasons that I think um, uh, backup irons are fairly important, not so much for a home defense rifle, but for a fighting rifle in general, is, sure. um, look, we have great optics nowadays. Um, even pretty cheap ones like that that Cyclops there. It's going to run. They're, yeah, yeah. They're, they're really tough. I um, This video may come out or before or after, but I compared it to a TA-44, and in case that video comes out after this one, I won't give too many spoilers, but they were... They're pretty comparable. It's a good optic. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's not because it could go down or, yeah, sure, battery die or whatever. But sure. the, the one thing that'll take an optic out of a fight real easy is if there's mud, blood, that sort of crap mm -hmm. on the lens. You can't see shit. Yep. Y you have to take it off. Yep. That's the main reason I think backup irons. Well, are... from a fighting rifle perspective, again, if we're going to go into a field rifle, I like to have backup irons at all times. Inside, I'm not as concerned about yeah. it. If I'm setting this up for home defense only, now we go back to the one gun concept of I'm going to use this one gun for hunting, competition, recreation, training, and, and home defense. Uh, yes, definitely want to ha want to have a set of sights on. Maybe that. not so much one gun, but that gun fills a lot of roles for me. Yeah. So if you have a multi-role gun, maybe that's a better way to say it. So again, you know, simple handguard, fine. Uh, gives you enough capability here to uh, attach something like a, a nice light mount. Uh, got the Surefire Scout, which is a good light. It is attached to a tape switch, which is fine. Uh, you know, that's, uh, it's an easy activation. It's not my way of doing things. I don't like tape switches unless they have a backup secondary way to activate the light in case and the, the tape switch gets rid of what the scout does not. There are some that do. You can buy a different tail cap for it. You can buy a different tail cap that actually has a secondary button. So if the tape switch gets ripped off, you can hit the button, which I like. You've got a, a reduced barrel, 12 inches with a suppressor on it. So, you know, like I mentioned before already, I'm a big fan of suppressors in home defense situations. I want to be able to hear and see afterwards. Um, it's very beneficial to me to be able to communicate that's, potentially with somebody. That's a good point. With law enforcement, with first responders, with, with someone else who's in the home, I want to be able to, to, to easily communicate with them. And a suppressor is loud enough inside. Honestly, if you fire a suppressor off a, off a 10, 11, 12 inch gun, it's it's actually yeah. pretty freaking loud. A lot and of indoors, people it's loud. misunderstand. They, um, 300 blackout's gotten really popular lately, sure. and people want to have a 300 blackout shooting subsonics with, with a silencer because it's quiet. Sure. Well, no, the purpose for a can in the context of defense, not range use or hunting or whatever, is, is just, like you said, to be able to communicate with your family, first responders, to hear, drop the gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. You know, I mean, I mean, how shitty would that be that the guy breaks into your house, you drill him, okay, everything's good, everybody's everybody's safe, and r immediately after, you don't have time to recover. There was a cop right around the corner. He came in, saw you, yelled, "You're here." Yeah, you can't hear. Yeah, can't hear a damn thing because your your ten and a half inch barrel is just ringing. He doesn't know you from Adam. That happened right. what like a month or two ago. Dude, There's... it happens like once a year here in Phoenix. I swear. Phoenix PD, and this is not against them at all. 
I think Phoenix PD or some local, one of our P PDs around here, uh, seems to like smoke some innocent homeowner at least once a year. Not because the law enforcement is making the bad choice, but because the homeowner is like this yeah. with any variation of firearm they may have. And then they hear, drop the weapon, drop the weapon. They're like, no, 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 I'm the good guy, right? And they turn towards yeah. law enforcement. They're like, nope, up, 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 right? And they light them up. So it, it, it is definitely a problem. And so my ability to be able to hear and see afterwards is why I like suppressors indoors. Look, guns are loud enough outside. Stick them in a confined space. Even this office uh, would be god awful to, to fire five, six, ten rounds out of this gun, even oh, yeah. three, uh, you know, whatever. It, it would just be awful. So, to critique the gun overall, I mean, honestly, I, I really like the setup. Um, there's nothing on here I would really change other than the light. Um, I would like to have a secondary way to activate that light without the tape switch. And me personally, I probably wouldn't even run the tape switch. I'm not a fan of them for this. Now, start throwing, you know, my lights and my lasers and my pecs and all that kind of stuff on there. Okay, now I want tape switches because that's easier and all that kind of stuff. A different context of gun. But for simple, easy, quick home defense, I like the tape switch. I have seen them fail. I have seen them get ripped off. It's just personally not my favorite. I like to have that secondary way. Other than that, you got a nice simple red dot. You got a, a backup fixed front sight base, which I like. Everything else on here is simple. You don't have anything too tricked out. You don't have anything too Gucci. Um, this doesn't look out of place. You know, if you were to sit this against 50 other ARs, several of them would look like this. Yeah. And that's the way you want your gun to look. You don't want it to look too out of the ordinary. So, yeah, I mean, overall critiquing it, if you, if you look down either one of our lists, um, minus the sling, which we kind of already talked about, especially with this gun, you have everything else on here. You've got a light. You've got a shortened barrel with a suppressor on it. You've got a good optic. Um, you know, you've got good ammunition that we cleared out earlier. That's good ammo that you selected. And you've got some training, some experience to back it up. So, I mean, really, with number one, which happened to be number one on both of our lists, which is training, almost irregardless of what this thing is or how it's set up, you, you can get the job done. Even if you are using, you know, like we looked at this picture here behind us, even if you are using, you know, granddad freaking lever gun and 357 mag or 3030 or whatever, like training is the most important element here. I don't think that we have to unpack that one much anymore I don't think so. because yeah. we've gone in depth into why training is so important. Sure. Obviously, the most important factor is that you're able to use whatever tools you have at hand, whether that's a lever action rifle or a badass Daniel Defense or whatever top of the line Gucci AR that you saw in the John Wick movie. The, what matters is that you're able to run it right. Training is the most important element here. Uh, you know, what, what's the, the Marines thing, right? One mind, any weapon. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of cliche, but it's true. Yeah. It, it absolutely is true. It's, it's easy for you guys to critique Glenn because um, he's selling the thing that he does. How convenient for you to, <laughs> for you to say that it's Sure, important. yeah, that, that is a good point, yeah. But you can also kind of flip that upside down and remind people that the reason that you do what you do is because it's that important. It is, and really what's interesting, too, about training for me personally is I never got into training to, to really do a business. I like the education part of training. Yes. You know, I got into training as a, as a way to educate people, and uh, I like teaching. I like education. I like the light bulb moment that I have with students from whether it's a 9-year-old kid, a 30-year-old SWAT cop, or, or a 90-year-old lady who's shooting a, her, her dead husband's gun for the first time. I mean, I've had so many cool experiences over the last decade of teaching such a variety of people that for me it's that light bulb moment. It's the education that really drives me. That's what, that's what keeps me passionate about it. And um, yes, it is kind of convenient. I'm up here going, hey, train. But look, I'm not saying necessarily even train with me. Yeah, it'd be cool if you did. That, that's great, right? That's how we make a living. But train with good people. I, I, again, I'll, ha I'll happily give anybody a list of other great instructors that they can go learn from, good ones who are well-vetted and understand. And well-vetted, by the way, doesn't mean shit about their resume, right? Because you get a lot of instructors in this industry leaning hard on a resume. Well, back in the day, I did X, Y, Z. And it's like, drop the knife. F*** you. Cool story, bro, about what you used to do. But what do you do now? Like, how are you keeping that edge sharp? How are, how are you maintaining those skills? What you, classes have you been to lately? What are you doing lately? How Are you keeping up with modern SOPs and modern TTPs? Are, are you taking what you did, whatever that may have been, and putting in the context of a home defense carbine? Because again, how the three of us may select to, to pick up a rifle and uh, and trick it out to go, you know, run night raids for you know the next six months, and how we may do that so that we can you know defend our family in the middle of the night, is going to be a little bit different. Because I need different things on each one of those tools, and so based on that, can the person you're going to 
take what their information, what their knowledge base is, and put it in context. You find yourself out there just running around with no shot accountability, uh, you know, doing stress fire exercises was really just freaking injury factories and, and just getting tired. And at the end of the day, you're sweating, you're tired. Like, wow, I'm sweaty and tired. That was a good day of training. Was it? Was there a measurable standard? If you think that you don't need training because you were in the Army or Marine Corps. XYZ, whatever. If, if you were in the Air Force or Navy, you, you know you need training. <laughs> Ouch. You, 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 you just do. <laughs> but if you were in the Army or the Marine Corps in a combat arms MOS and you think you don't need training because you were kicking in doors in Fallujah, so I know how to do this shit. Well, no. No. Well, for one thing, the skills are perishable. Mm. If, if that was five, ten years ago, you don't really know how to do that anymore. You're, you're probably not in the same physical condition you were. You're probably not in the I'm same not. mindset you were. You're not in that constant op mindset of just go, 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 go. Like, if you took any of the three of us in this room and just dropped us into that op routine again, I mean, it would be exhausting, man, because that's... Brutal. I, I'm not ready for that, you know what I mean? I, I, that's not what I do now, you know? And those skills that you learned out there are... Those skills are tuned for stacking up and doing doing the grunt thing in the grunt way, not <laughs> def desperately defending your life from a crackhead in your tidy whities Right. Glenn, thank you for having me. Thank you for adding tools to my toolbox. Hey, you're very welcome. I hope this video presented you with some ideas to consider. It won't be the be-all, end-all, and only you can decide what's perfect for your situation. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and we'll do our best to get you squared away. I'd put a link to Independence Training in the description, but that would get this video demonetized. Instead, I'll put Glenn's contact information in the description and just let you know that the calendar for classes is on the Independence Training website, and if it isn't your first day on the internet, you should be able to find their site very easily. If you would like help finding good instructors in your area, leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.